Hey going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So we've just arrived at Brisbane Airport. We will be making a short business trip down to Sydney to the Australian Manufacturing Week. And if we've got any spare time, we're gonna do some sightseeing. So let's go catch our flight. Righto guys, so we've made it to Sydney. We're here at our hotel, we're staying at the Meriton. The Convention Centre and Darling Harbour is a very short walk away, so we're gonna get over there and take a look. So we've arrived here at the Sydney Convention Centre. It'll be a really good opportunity to see any of the new innovative tooling that's coming out and catch up with a few of our suppliers. So let's go in and check it out. The Australian Manufacturing Week is held once a year and it alternates between Sydney and Melbourne. It's been a few years since we went to the Expo, so we thought it was a great opportunity to go down. It's the one event that showcases the latest innovations, technologies and equipment in manufacturing. And there is a variety of different product zones within the show. There's additive manufacturing and that spotlights the latest advances in 3D printing. You'll see machine tools and equipment targeted at metalworking, including CNC's, forming and fabrication, plasma, laser and water jets. There's also robotics and automation, which shows the latest state-of-the-art equipment and processes. You'll see manufacturing solutions for things like material handling and safety. Yep. 
and also welding solutions with new developments and welding applications. Righto, so we've had a look around the um, around the show. We've had a look at a couple of machines, but getting pretty hungry now, so we're going to go and get some lunch. After lunch we headed back to the show. There was over 160 exhibitors so there was still plenty to see. We have found that the Melbourne Manufacturing Week is a lot bigger. But this was still a really great chance to see a lot of the new equipment and tooling on the market and also to catch up with some of our suppliers, so a fantastic networking opportunity for us as well. Righto guys, so that was the Australian Manufacturing Week. We got around to see all of our suppliers and we got to see a lot of new innovative tooling. So we've got one more day here in Sydney, but we won't be spending it at the show. We're going to go and do some sightseeing instead.
So we decided to go and see the Sydney Harbour Bridge. So that was about a two and a half K walk away from our hotel and also had a good look at the Opera House. It was getting a bit late at that stage, so we decided to head back, and that was the end of day one. Righto guys, it's day two. We've got our morning coffee. We do have a couple of hours before our flight is due to leave. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go check out the Australian Maritime Museum. The Australian National Maritime Museum was built in 1991 on Darling Harbour and is the National Centre for Maritime Collections with a wide range of galleries, exhibits and historical vessels to explore. So first thing we decided to do was head inside to the museum and see what was in the gallery. This is a homemade wooden hydroplane jet powered boat. It holds the world water speed record of 511 kilometers per hour and that was recorded in 1978 and is still the world record today. And this is the original glass lens from the old Tasman Island Lighthouse, which was one of the most isolated lighthouses in Australia. It was first lit in 1906, and then the lighthouse became automated in 1976 and converted to solar in 1991. This here is a triple expansion marine steam engine which was salvaged from the HMAS Karakara which was launched in 1926 as a ferry on the Sydney Harbour. This engine was capable of making almost 1300 horsepower with steam pressure of 180 psi and weighed over 35 tonnes. In the Navy gallery hangs this Sikorsky S-70B2 Seahawk helicopter which served in the Royal Australian Navy between 1988 and 2017. It was deployed numerous times to the Middle East and was involved with a number of search and rescue missions as well. There was many more artifacts to see in the gallery, but we decided it was time to go outside and have a look at the real thing. This is the HMAS Vampire. It's Australia's largest museum vessel and the last of the country's big gunships. It's one of six daring class destroyer vessels which was built on Cockatoo Island Dockyard in Sydney and they were the largest destroyers built in Australia. The HMAS Vampire served in the Royal Australian Navy from 1959 to 1986.
The ship's original arsenal included three twin turrets housing six four and a half inch guns. Those are still in place. Also two single gun and two twin gun Bofors anti-aircraft guns. And there were five anti-ship torpedo launchers, as well as a surface to subsurface anti-submarine mortar, which have since been removed. But despite its firepower, the HMAS Vampire had a peaceful career before being transferred to the museum in 1997. The vessel is 118 metres or 389 feet long. It originally housed 245 sailors and 29 officers. Fully loaded, it weighed almost 4,000 tonnes and it ran off two steam turbines that generated 54,000 horsepower could travel at a speed of 30 and a half knots and could travel a distance of 3,000 nautical miles at 20 knots. Next, we headed on to the HMAS Onslow, which is an Oberon-class submarine that was commissioned during the Cold War and first launched in 1968. It was built in Scotland with a length of 90 metres or 295 feet. The Oberon-class was one of the most advanced type of conventional submarines, combining high speed with great underwater endurance. The main armament are six 21-inch bow torpedo tubes capable of firing MK-48 torpedoes and harpoon missiles. The submarine housed 60 sailors and 8 officers, which is incredible for the confined space. God, you wouldn't want to be claustrophobic. And I've never seen so many valves and instruments in one place and how they knew what each one does is quite amazing. The two propeller shafts are each driven by electric motors generated by two supercharged V16 diesel generators. These could propel the submarine at up to 17 knots when submerged, and the sub could travel up to 9,000 nautical miles and reach a depth of 200 metres or 660 feet. The HMAS Onslow travelled the equivalent of more than 16 times around the world before being decommissioned in 1999. We also went on board an Australian-built replica of Captain James Cook's HMB Endeavour ship, and this is one of the world's most accurate maritime replica vessels. It has almost 30 kilometres of rigging and 750 wooden blocks or pulleys. The masts carry 28 sails that spread almost 10,000 square feet of canvas. Below deck is where the crew would eat and sleep and in the sleeping quarters it was quite uncomfortable. You would have to crouch down to make your way through that area. The great cabin is where Captain Cook worked and dined, sharing the space with famous botanist Joseph Banks. 
Construction of the replica began in 1988 and was launched five years later. It then travelled on many voyages, including sailing to Europe, the US and around Australia three times. And to this day, it still continues regular trips along the Australian coastline. Getting to explore the three different vessels was really interesting. And if you're ever in Sydney, we'd definitely recommend taking a day to go and check out this museum. So that was the Maritime Museum, pretty interesting in there. Got to have a good look at some of those warboats and the old submarine. Finished with that, now we're going to go grab some lunch. Righto guys, so that's our Sydney trip complete. We're just waiting for our Uber to pick us up, take us back to the airport. So thanks for watching.